So the main thing that I wanted to talk about today is how to design data. So first, you're going to get likely a data set or some sort of data organization that the, the organization has been using for, you know, for a couple of years. And there's probably a good chance that maybe some SI intern set up their database and then mm -hmm. left, and now they have no idea how to use it. Or they've been using it in, in a way that is, that's not completely, um, doesn't completely translate into what the organization is now and what the organization is doing. So it's important to try and spend as much time as you can to figure out how their data is structured currently. There may be weird things going on in the data. It may be structured very nicely, but then you might find that there was one person who was inputting something in the wrong way or putting something in a different way. So spending some time with their current organization can make a huge difference before you try and translate it into something and then realize that there are all these problems. So trying to get as best of a sense and sort of mapping out what their data looks like currently can go a long way. One of the things that can be most helpful in terms of sort of making recommendations for a new kind of way to organize data is by controlling who and at what cost someone can update the data. So if it's very easy in a cell to put, put in whatever you want, there's probably about a 100% chance that people are going to put in whatever they want. Um, if you have a cell where it's supposed to be male or female, and everyone agrees, okay, we're going to put in male or female, it could maybe take a week before someone starts putting in man or woman or something like that. that and as soon as you break those things, they become so much harder to work with because... And it may be just a little thing way down in the data, and you might not even realize that you're getting results that are not the results that you expect because you're going into the database and summing on, you know, you want to know, like, there's a score or something like this, and you're calculating the mean, but you don't realize that there are five categories instead of the three that you originally planned. So by making it harder for people to change the schema, you can, the, the sort of organization of the data, you can, you can significantly improve the ability for people to input it and for the analysis to, to sort of happen. But that doesn't mean that you should make something that's so rigid that without a computer programmer they can't go and change it because then when they have different needs they're going to inevitably try and you know, sort of take a, a square peg and put it in the round hole of your data design and it's going gonna, it's gonna to get even worse. So it should be something that's updatable but that has a certain cost to update it so that, that someone can change the organization but they have to go through more work than just typing something different into an Excel um, cell. It's also very important to document your design. I think a lot of you might end up helping out organizations that had someone else set up the, the database or their sort of data processes and has a cell that's called like Q57 and you will have no idea what Q57 is because nobody documented the database. So, so one of the most important things you can do so that they can continue to update whatever it is that you suggest is to really document all of the decisions that you make. If you have a cell that has sex and you say that it's going to be male or female, you should document that as the two potential ways to, to sort of delineate this. Um, and you should also try to make sure that that documentation is with the data. If it ends up being like a handout that you give them, there's a good chance that that's going to get lost. So if you have it as like a PDF that goes with the data, then it's very easy when they zip up their database and send it to people at the next data dive two or three years down the road. Then they'll get that PDF with it, and it will save a lot of time and a lot of hassle. At the same time that you want to try to make something that's sort of usable by the organization and sort of controls what people can enter and what they, what they can change, you also want to make sure that it's as simple and usable as possible. If you create like a really complicated database schema, there's a good chance that it will become too confusing. So it's, it's sort of this balancing act of creating something that does what you want it to do, controls data entry, but also isn't, isn't too complicated and too confusing. So, so you should be aware of sort of what the, um, I guess you could say what the resources that the organization has and how those resources are, are applicable to them updating their database. And then finally, just, just as a reminder again, make sure that when you're thinking about your organization of the data, that you design it in such a way that you're aware of the collection processes. If they're going out 
and say interviewing households, and then they're trying to do analysis on the person level. You know, so like there might be four people in a house, and their their database has information about the house, but then their analysis is on the person level, and they're disaggregating people. You might want to suggest some sort of design that has the surveys inputted at the person level, maybe with a, a link to the house, but that then the underlying structure is based on people instead of houses, if that's what their ultimate analysis is. 